Hello everyone, it is Sherry from Sherry's Painting. So today we're going to be painting Winter Cabin and it's going to be a fairly cold painting. So we want to use blue, black, gray and white. I've got an 8 by 10 canvas here but you can use any size you like. And I'm also using a half inch flat brush to apply the paint. I'm using a liberal amount of paint to cover this being dark at the top light in the center and then dark again at the bottom and i want you just to blend this all together don't spend any amount of time in one area as it will lift the paint and make sure that you do your edges when um, you've got all that paint on there just really smooth it out and blend it in so that you can't tell where one color starts and another stops and then you can dry it with a hair dryer if you like and we will see you guys all on the next step. So for this step, we want to use our chalk and draw in some mountains. I want mount mountains on either side with a little bit of a gap in the middle. So, um, and also we want to draw, draw a horizon line along the center of the canvas. And we'll see you on the next step. So for this step, we're going to be blocking in our distant mountains. So I am using a little bit of black, a little bit of burnt umber, and a little bit of blue. I'm also using my small filbert brush to do this. Um, as you guys know, I, I love this brush because I just get good coverage and I have great control on it. So, so I just want to block in the top part of those mountains for now um, and like I said just vary your colors as you go and we want no hard edges yet we want um, everything to be nice and soft so make sure you're blending that in with no hard edges okay um, and do the mountains on both sides of the canvas and just make sure that you're um, you know fading those out at the bottom so that we don't get any hard edges so after we have done that step, we will be moving on to the next step. We'll be putting um, another layer on the mountains. But for now, just block those mountains in. No hard edges, just nice and soft. And we will see you all on the next step. So for step four, we're going to be adding a little bit of um, shadow and highlight to our background mountains, just giving it another dimension. So I'm just taking a little bit of white, a little bit of black, and a little bit of blue and mixing it together. And, and the light will be coming. There's going to be a moon in, in this picture. So um, the light is coming from the right-hand side of the canvas. And I'm just going along the top and I'm just haphazardly dropping in, dropping in um, some crevices and whatnot. Not, make, not making it too consistent, making a little bit in, uncons, inconsistent. Um, but again, just using that light blue, lighter blue mixture that we've made and um, just filling that in on the canvas. Wherever you feel like the light might hit, it is coming in from the right hand side. Then what we're gonna do is I, and I used my Filbert brush for that by the way, and then what we're gonna do is switch to the uh, round brush and with that same mixture, possibly a little darker, I want you just to make some very background trees, okay? And these are gonna be pine trees. And here when I did it, I did them too light, so I had to switch the color a little bit darker. And I just want some distant pine trees in the background there. And um, just make these pine trees and again, make them inconsistent um, as to height and shape and form. So here I've added the darker because I was using it too light. We all learn as we go. So, and just, you know, um, they're really, really in the distance. So, 
don't worry too much about definition or shape. We're just giving the uh, impression that there are trees in the background. So continue to do that. By the way, if you if you guys are all liking what I'm putting up um, on my channel, please do like and subscribe. It helps my channel to grow and um, you know and share if you want. Here I'm using a little bit of white now, a white and blue lighter mixture, and just to add a little bit of highlight to the parts of the mountains where I feel the light would be hitting and some you want to do the crevices you don't want to use hard lines here again uh, everybody because this is just another layer that we're putting on the mountains so and you want to sporadically just move it around and once it dries it just has a beautiful effect and you know even though you think it might not look good it will look good so just wherever you feel it needs it um, just put on a little bit of light a little extra added lightness um, mixing that blue and black and white together and just making it a little lighter now i'm going in and i'm just giving my trees a little bit of of that lighter blue mixture not killing all the dark because you need the dark to show the light okay and then we are going to be going on to the next step So for this step, we're going to be blocking in some pine trees at the base of the mountain on the left-hand side. I am going to be using my um, um, fan brush for this, a small fan brush. I'm mixing black and blue together, and I'm just going to make some points, um, you know, in different, different varying the height and um, to make these pine trees and with the fan brush you want to just turn the brush over on its side once you've located where you want your trees to be you want them to be varying heights and you want the trees to be thicker at the bottom than they are at the top so just place your trees on that side along and use your fan brush just to spread them out it's a really simple way to make pine trees and they don't have to be perfect because nothing is perfect in nature. Then what I'm going to do actually is rinse off the brush and we are going to just take the filbert brush and just spread that out at the bottom, the dark um, from the trees there as far as the um, chalk line. And um, then I'll be taking my filbert brush again and um, mixing a little bit, putting just a few more little things in, at the base of the mountain there and making a hill. I've decided the hill, there's going to be a hill on the other mountain there. So, um, so just fill that in with the... Um, you know, spread that out with the darker mixture and leave little dark spots in there because we want crevices in the snow. So um, then what we're going to do is we are going to um, take our filbert brush and we're just going to highlight um, these trees and add a little bit more snow there. Um, and again, make sure to leave those dark, dark patches. Watch the lay of the land and... Um, and, and then what we're going to do is just dab the end of the filbert brush in some very white and blue mixture. And we're going to highlight those boughs on the pine trees there and make them a little more individualized. So keeping in mind that the light is coming in from the right hand side. Okay. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to locate actually with the liner brush the tops of the trees first just so I know where I'm going. Okay, and then take your filbert brush, dab it in the white and the light blue mixture and then we're just going to add a few little boughs on those trees. 
and you want them again to start out at the top go to the bottom it's always darker toward the bottom as well so and just make it a little lighter on the right hand side on your trees and then i will see you again in the next step so in this step we're just i'm going to be using my round brush here and i'm just going to highlight little points on the mountain with straight white this time just because it'll make it glisten okay on those mountaintops we will be adding in a moon um, here shortly but um, just not quite yet um, so just add a little bit of white um, not too much. I see I've added a little too much there on the left and I will probably try and fade that out a little bit because um, again we all make mistakes so it's all trial and error but just you know where you think the, the white should be. You don't want to overkill it um, but that those mountains will be glistening um, with the moonlight. So just a little tiny bit the paint needs to be quite thick for this um, and that way you get that sparkly effect so once you've done that you want to highlight basically around the 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 top and the sides of those mountains and then i've also taken a little bit more um, white and blue mixture lighter with my filbert brush and i'm filling in the snow again with another layer so keeping in mind that the light is coming from the right hand side and making sure that we leave some dark spots there and right to the chalk line um, just another added layer there and adding a little extra again to that mountain which i may i feel like i may end up having to lighten that up but we'll be putting trees in the front there too so i'll probably wait for another step to do that and then again locating the tops of those trees with the liner brush in white just to give those a little bit of highlight as well so um now I'm drawing a path, so I want you to use that inner spot as your ending point and then just make sure your path goes wider as you go towards you with the perspective. And then we will be going on with the next step. So for this step, we are going to be putting in some trees at the front. So I've mixed a little, I'm mixing a little bit of burnt umber along with um, light. Um, I'm kind of doing this backwards of what I'm supposed to be doing it, but a little bit of Bix, uh, burnt umber and um, some white. And I'm just laying in where I want these two front trees to go. So, and I'm not, you know, I'm leaving it almost fuzzy at the edges here, um, but I just want to um, have these two trees that are joined together at the bottom. And so I'm gonna do another large one right here and it's gonna go right up off the canvas, okay? And um, again, just using the light and, uh, sorry, the white and the um, burnt umber together right now. And I'm using my round, uh, round brush. Now I'm adding a little bit of more shadow to the back area because I want the front area of the tree to be a little bit lighter and we want to make it look round so and I'm joining it at and I'm bringing it right to the base of our chalk line there and then I'm going to add a little more snow so I've gone in with quite a bit of water and quite a bit or quite a bit of water and just a little tiny bit of white gone in between those trees and added just another layer of snow there to from the back of that mountain on the right and along the side of the path um, to the end of the canvas there to the bottom of the canvas now i'm going up and i am going to add in a little more brown to the edges of those trees at the back of the tree 
And again, I'm using my filbert brush here. And now I'm sorry my hand is in the way, but what I'm doing is I've put my brush in the light, uh, white, sorry, and the brown mixed together. And I've sort of just pulled my brush to the left starting at the top and working my way down the side of that tree it adds a little bit of highlight to that tree but this is not the final highlight this is just another layer and then i'm going in with um, a little bit of brown again on the back edge just to make it a little bit darker again it's just layer after layer after layer on these trees and really any painting that you do it's just you know you have to you have to have the layers and again i'm going along the front now and i'm going along with some white and brown mixed together a little lighter this time and i'm just bringing in the front of that tree a little bit making little knots here and there and separating the two which we will separate even more but and also a little bit more light on the far tree as well and now i'm going in with black i put my liner brush in pure black and i'm just making little um, haphazard dots and shapes along those trees and just again to make it look like it's got a rounded appearance and it's not flat looking and we will go in with another layer um, even when this is done as well And now we're going in with some more snow. Okay, the filbert brush, we're adding another layer of snow in there. Again, it's layer after layer, but I do want you to keep, you know, keep your eye on those dark patches because we want those to still be in the picture. And now I'm going with the liner brush toward the back and just adding a low light to the back of the tree. Sometimes your finger works very well for, for scrubbing little things in, but we will be continuing on and putting the moon in on the next step and then continuing with our painting. So we'll see you on the next step. So for this step, we're gonna be placing the moon. I have just a cap off of a pen and I've dipped it in white paint just to give me the outline of the moon. And then I've taken my small round brush and gone from the edges of the outline and pulled them toward the center of the moon. Um, I went out of the line a little bit, but that's okay. I just sort of try and fix it up as I go. And once you have that moon placed, um, I do add in a little bit of a darker color as well, just to shade it in a little bit, straighten it up, and then we will be moving right on to the next step. So for this step, you'll need your chalk, and we are going to be drawing in a cabin here. So um, just draw on an angle uh, the roof as well as the side of the cabin, and then along the sides, nothing on the bottom, just a simple little cabin structure. And we will see you on the next step once you're happy with what you've got. And pause the video anytime. So for this step, we are going to be blocking in the cabin. So I am using a angled flat brush just to make sure I can get in with those angles. I have mixed together burnt umber and black to make a very dark coat. And I'm just leaving my chalk marks in place at the moment um, just so I know where I'm going with this cabin. So just block in that cabin with that color. Make sure there's no hard lines at the base of the cabin um, because we will be adding snow in there to set it down in the next step. So we don't want any hard lines there. 
Um, and again, I'm adding that brown to the roof of, of the cabin as well. And the angled brush just makes life a little bit easier for, for the angle. So um, if you don't have one, get one. Um, and then we are going to be blocking in or putting in some more pine trees in the back um, behind the cabin, which in hindsight, I guess we could have done beforehand. But again, just wasn't sure where I was going with this as it's just, you know, coming out of my head. So um, with the background pine trees, we're going to do those in the sa same way we did the others. Just mix up the blue and black and make different um, sizes and different heights of the pine trees in the back. And you want this pine, these pine trees, I want the house surrounded by pine trees. So um, I am adding a little bit of just uh, little bushy things in the back there as well. And then I'm gonna add the pine trees on top, but you want the pine trees to be, um, you know, coming in toward the cabin. And I don't really want to go any further on the cabin until we do this step. So, so I want the pine trees on the back there and just put a line in and then just fill them out. I'm just using my round brush here to do this. And I'm just putting them a little bit lower, um, you know, so that they're in the background of the cabin. So go right over top of your lines. This is why we don't want hard lines in our painting because when we paint things over top, we don't want a ridge showing through. So just using the black and the blue mixed together with this step. And then we're gonna go ahead and put some lighter color for the snow on it as well. In a second here, when we're done. And feel free to stop the video at any time and pause it, um, you know, to, to either do the trees however you want, or, you know, maybe you have a different idea of what trees to put in behind there. This is a fairly long video, this one, so um, hopefully we can get it all together. So again, I'm just dabbing with the round brush there just to indicate those trees highlighting them more on the one side than the other and making sure that there's separation in between. So, and it really is a beautiful little winter landscape so far. Just marking out the notches at the top of the trees as well. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of white and mark out the tops of those trees. And just fill in a little bit more there on the trees around with that liner brush. And then we're going to take our flat or our angled brush again, put it in the um, white and the brown as well after we're done these trees. And we're gonna just make um, the cabin a little bit more of a log cabin and an old wood cabin. So I'm basically just dragging that brush um, down and in some areas missing some as well, just to make it look like old weathered wood just like that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to flatten the brush and dip it into black and just make those angles a little more, um, or sorry, the wood slats a little bit more prominent. And adding a shadow to the base of the roof all the way along. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just given the indication of this little cabin and set in the woods, it's been abandoned for many years. And again, 
adding some lines in there with the black. Now I'm putting a little bit of snow on the roof and this is an old slanted roof. So, and don't forget to add on the right hand side of the cabin. This is just the first layer. So we want it to be a bit darker. And then I'm adding a few windows on the barn as well, or on the um, old cabin as well, just with my script liner brush, making some squares, one on the side and two in the front. And then making them a little bit bigger. And I'm going to add a little highlight there around the edge of the roof and just sort of scumble on the snow here. And along the top edge. And along the side. And then I'm going in with my flat angled brush again with that with the second layer of snow. And along the side as well, just with the side point. I find that side might be a little bit light, but we'll have to lighten that up a, or darken that up a little bit. And just using the remaining white that's on my brush to do the rest of that. Now I'm gonna roll my liner brush around in the white, make it ink-like consistency, and just add a little highlight on those windows. Maybe there's an old door frame or something around there, and that's it, next step. So in this step, I'm just adding a little bit more to uh, black to the birch trees that are there. Um, I just felt like it needed to be a little bit darker. So I've just got straight black and I, it doesn't really matter where you're doing this. Just put the marks on wherever you feel like. Sometimes they make neat shapes and then you can find pictures in them. So, um, so do that for the first part here. And then once we're done that, we're going to be laying in the snow around the cabin there. So again, just wherever you feel like it needs it. Here and there, I'm just using my script liner brush for this part. And then I, I believe I add a little bit of snow at the base there as well. When I'm done here, I'll just go in my, with my filbert brush and mix a little bit of the blue and the white together and just make a little snow drift around the house there, around the cabin. And just leave dark spots here and there. There you go, and just set that cabin right down in the snow there. And just bring it forward a little bit. And back in here behind the tree as well. Just a few little highlighted areas there. And then another one here. But you want the light to show dark and the dark to show light. And in there as well. And we will get rid of that chalk line as well, but um, just not quite yet. And then back in there too, I'm just adding another layer on top there. And the hill in the back. Then I'm just going back and forth and zig zigzagging with the white and blue. Just the white and blue mixed together. And just laying down that path a little bit. And then again, highlighting that snow a touch. So it looks like it belongs there. 
And now I'm drawing little lines that would indicate uh, a road that people travel on. So just make sure you go with your lines of perspective there that you've made for your path. And now I'm adding that snow drift in front of the tree. So wherever you want them, you can just drop them in. And I'm adding a little shadow in behind that tree as well. And a few more snow drifts at the front there. And again, just accentuating that path and just laying it in and getting rid of the chalk lines actually with that snow. And then what I'm gonna do is go into the uh, black and the bur or burnt umber and we're gonna make some fence post or an old fence that's weathered and beaten down here over on the left hand side. And you can make it as tall as you want. I want it fairly tall because then it pushes back that cabin. So the top of it will actually sit almost at the base of the cabin there. I'm making three posts all together. The one leaning quite over to the left. And then I'm going to make slats of wood that go in between as well. And just using the black and the umber mixed together. There you go, and just over and across, not worrying too much right now. We're just blocking it in. We will separate these posts uh, in on the next step. So and I'm gonna have them lean over just to make it look old and rickety. And then once you've blocked that in, we can move right on to the next step. I am putting a little brown on the right side, brown and white as well, just as a first coat. So we'll see you on the next step. So for this step, we're gonna be fixing up these fence posts. So I've used light brown and white uh, down the right hand side of these posts, and as well as at the top of the um, slats of wood. And we just want to make it so that the post looks like it's in front of the slat of wood. So, and you know, don't do it in just a straight line, just break it up a little bit. You can add little, a little bit of black to it as well along the, along the left hand edge. And on the top or on the bottom of the slats, we want it to be quite dark. So we want to add some dark on there as well. And so here I'm adding the little bit of highlight there, which is what we're looking for. And then I'm gonna add a little brown to the top of the slats of the wood as well. And it's just straight burnt umber, a little bit of white on top of that, just to highlight. And we're also gonna add um, snow on these fence posts as well. And you can use your white script or your script liner brush and go into the black and go into the white and highlight little pieces of the wood. But we want this wood, these posts to look rather round. So just remember to highlight the one over the other. So now I'm just adding a little black underneath. And now I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of highlight to the top. Now I'm going into straight white and I'm just adding it on the post. You want this paint to be fairly thick because you want it to sh really show up. So fairly thick and we're going to do e that to each of the slats of wood as well. And just put a little bit of snow on there. We've already got our base coat there so and it just makes it look more realistic and more fun. It looks like it hasn't been tended to for quite a while, so. Then I'm going into my script liner brush and I'm going to use a little bit of gray paint um, to go along the front of the post as well as a slight highlight, but you want that line to be fairly thin. Okay. 
And then what you're what we're going to do is we're going to go in and make a bunch of grasses. So you can put your your brush in gray, you can put your brush, your script liner brush in white, in brown or sorry, in black. And I want you just to pull up some grasses underneath those birch trees there and also um you know, just in the dark spots or in the shadowed areas by the birch tree. And then we're gonna go ahead and place them in front of the fence posts as well. So just let your arm feel free to flow it any way you like, this way, that way, taller, shorter, round, um, some bent over, however it feels right to you. Just add a, a lot of water, make your, your paint the consistency of ink to let it roll off the end of your brush. Takes a lot of water, a lot of a, a little bit of paint, and um, rolling your brush in that uh, mixture so that your your paintbrush works more like a pen than anything else. And we're gonna put quite a few of these blades of grass in here as well. Because I want that fence to sit right down. And we can't really see the snow drift, but we can just see the the snow or the grasses coming up that maybe have overgrown the snow hasn't covered yet. So just keep going with that. You can stop the video at any time if you, you know, would like to, um, to take your time on this step. And anytime you want to stop this video, just, you know, because I want you guys to take your time. I'm doing it quickly so that you guys can sort of see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And I really do hope you guys are learning from this. And yes, I do make mistakes, um, but you know, what can we do? Nobody's perfect. So put as many grasses as you'd like here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna dip it directly in the white. And I'm just gonna add on these little tufts of snow on some of these grass grasses. And they're not, it's not in a consistent manner. It's just sort of everywhere. And it just adds that extra little, um, that extra little bit to the painting. So do that wherever you like, take your time on the step. I'm also adding a little extra highlight to the roof of the cabin. And then we will see you in the next step. Okay, everybody, we're on the last step. It's your signature that's required now. I hope you're proud of what you've accomplished here. And um, please do like and subscribe if you are liking my videos. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.